Greetings friends! Recently a neighboring piece of property went up for sale and it is perfect. It would be perfect for raising livestock for pasture, whether it be pasture poultry, whether it be some sheep or a cow. It would be perfect for that because we don't really have that right now. So I put in an offer, but that first offer was rejected. So I put in another offer, but we're still waiting to hear back on that offer. But in the meantime, got to make the most of what we have. So right here, I have some chickens and ducks that we've been moving around the property a little bit. And I'm planning to move them into a new area that we haven't had them in before to kind of help clear it up at the same time. And it's just all wooded and has poison ivy and things growing in it. And it's directly behind our house. So I really want to clean it up anyways. Uh, also, to hopefully to clean it up to uh, make it less inhabitable for snakes too that we don't want there so uh but i got my work cut out for me and our pond's right back here so we also have a, a boat there's a canoe there's a kayak and so we got to move a couple of those things and just slowly start cleaning up over here and there's also a tree that fell back here so for me to run the fence like i'm trying to do plan to do here is plan to extend their premier one netting around this area so that way it keeps them contained uh, I need to move all this stuff and somehow get that tree out of the way. So uh, I think first I'm going to just move the stuff, start organizing it, and then work my way up to the tree. And this right here was the first brooder that I made for letting the chickens and ducks that get broody putting them in here to sit on their eggs and it actually we actually used it a few times there was a duck a couple ducks that hatched some eggs in in here as well as some chickens and it kept them safe where they could be outside and sitting on their their eggs without having to worry about predators coming and we were able to feed them and give them water but uh definitely it's been retired now it's time to <laughs> to disassemble it, burn it up, whatever we need to do. And I actually do need to make a new brooder because we do have um, some, we do have 50 meat birds coming this week. So I need to be putting together an actual brooder for chicks. And then I, I do at some point want to go back to letting some of them hatch their own again. Uh, it's just so neat to see that process. Some of our paddles for canoes and boats. And uh, it's actually something we don't get to do as often as we would like to and get on the pond and just enjoy it. So maybe I need to make that a goal for this year. Another thing that I want to utilize here on the homestead more is fish from the pond. We really should be harvesting fish from here. There's actually too many in here. So, uh, I, well, the only challenge is I don't like to fish. I don't like to just stay there and just hang out and wait for the fish to get on the line. It's like, oh, I like to catch, but I don't like to fish, and I like to eat fish too. So, uh, something we're gonna have to figure out. So, uh, do any of you like fishing? Let me know in the comment section below. There's poison ivy all through here. But the chickens and ducks will take care of that. But uh, before I can bring them in here to do that, I need to bring out the chainsaw, bust it out, and uh, cut some of this tree up so that way I can wrap the fence around here and then up there and then around so they can just work on clearing this area out in here. All right, so it's actually off the ground here, so this looks like a good spot. Make the cut. All 
Alright, so we have a number of logs cut up now. Enough to go ahead and move our fence through here and uh, let the chickens and ducks start grazing on here and cleaning it up for us at the same time. So we're going to wrap it around here after we pick up these logs and uh, Sayla is just in time with the lawn tractor for me to load these in and dump them somewhere else. Hey guys, how are you doing? Good. Perfect timing. I'm going to carry some of these logs over here for you to dump off over there at our, our wood stack pile. That's heavy. See if you can dump those sails. I love this tool right here, log ox. Comes in handy, especially when you're doing stuff like that when it's pretty much just you. You have another hand called log ox. And uh, I will leave the link in the show notes below if anybody is looking to get one of these. All right, this is where the real fun begins. At least for me, I'm not looking forward to it. And uh, another reason I want to get this done now, post it later is I don't want to have to deal with any type of snakes. Uh, a little nervous in here right now, but it's been, it was really cool this morning, so hopefully they're not warmed up yet if there are any in here. But the fun part is we're gonna have to come through here, work around poison ivy to start bringing our fence in through here. And uh, this part right here probably be the most challenging that I'm gonna have to work my way through. But we're gonna do what we have to do and make it work. <laughs> All right, to move the netting, there's basically two ways that I am familiar with to do it. One is, if you have your current set up, have an additional set of fencing and set it up and then open the old one up for them to walk into. And then the other way, which we're gonna do today, because um, I don't think I have any fencing available uh, to, to extend the setup, is we have two fences, two nettings, sets of nettings attached together here so what we're going to do is we're going to minimize one pull it in close them in and then take the other one and then extend it so it's basically one will kind of stay the same and then one will be extended so we're going to try that out all right so we mostly was able to bring our existing fence around to meet up with itself uh, but just ran a little bit short, so we brought in uh, some scrap fencing that we do have around here and uh, we're going to use it just to kind of block off. The reason why I didn't want to use it to extend is because it's been beat up really bad and uh, it, won't electri it won't electrify correctly. So it works temporarily for what we're doing now to keep them from getting out, the chickens from getting out on us. But uh, next we're going to take up, there's two sections of fence, we got green and then we have white that made the one. So we're going to take up the old white one that the green one was attached to and shift it down here to where I was want to get things cleaned up and where I was just working. All right, push it in. All right, now it's coming through the poison ivy. Let me tell you, I don't know about you guys, have you ever had poison ivy before? I know some people are allergic to it and some are. Some, and believe it or not, you can actually change. You can be allergic to it, and then not allergic to it, and then you go back to being allergic to it, and vice versa. But the first time I had poison ivy, terrible. Had all over me. And I mean all over me, everywhere. Even in under my underpants. <laughs> this end of the fence is up. Let's figure out how we can connect, and we may need to do a second fence after all. 
But uh, it's one of the challenges of raising animals in the woods with the fencing. And especially in an area you haven't been before, you gotta figure some things out. Alright, so um, I was a little wrong when I said I was gonna have to use an extra fence for this area. Yeah, no swallow. I do. <laughs> so after detangling this fence, because it was tangled up and had sticks in it, which is one of the downsides of uh, setting these, this fencing up in wooded areas, which I really don't want to do anymore. But that's another story. Actually, no, let's tell that story. <laughs> that's one of the reasons why I want pasture areas is uh, so it can be easier to move our, our animals and our systems here. But uh, I'm just gonna have to deal with it for now. So uh, let's attach this fence. Daddy, what about that hole over there? What hole? Ah, that is a hole there. Hope oh, nothing lives there. Flip it. project has not gone the way I want it to at all. It started off going well, but it's gone completely downhill from there. And I knew there was another reason why I didn't want to use this fence before. But there's not a way of attaching this fence to the other fence. Ugh. All right, so we all have gotten touched by this poison ivy. And with poison ivy, you want to get it washed off right away before it starts absorbing in your skin. So we need to go wash off. Well, this project hasn't gone exactly the way I envisioned when we started, but sometimes that happened. Didn't envision having to stop what I was doing and take a cold shower, <laughs> but uh, that happened. Speaking of cold showers, Wim Hof uh, really admires some of the things that he's doing with his work, and uh, one of the things that he suggests is getting cold showers. And in a couple videos ago, I, I showed a demonstration, a brief demonstration of how to do a Wim Hof breathing and it really helps supercharge your body to help you get get energized for what you're about to do uh, and some people, some of you have made some comments that hey you're not breathing right, you're not breathing right yet yeah, that's one breathing technique there's another type of breathing technique for calming your body and relaxing and really st stimulating the diaphragm to help your body go into a deeper relaxation mode and there are various types of breathing techniques for that like right now, I'm having to deep breathe in deep. Four seconds, breathe in. Sometimes you can hold and then breathe out. There's numerous types of breathing techniques for different purposes. So uh, I just want to mention that and maybe I can go in that some of those things more in another video, a number of health things to, to help you with uh, different things that I have learned throughout the years. Taylor, that's chickens in the ducks into this area to start grazing and they're doing a good job with doing that and uh, actually I'm thinking about we are since our ponds here and the, the property kind of goes all around the pond I'm thinking about making a permanent area right here for the ducks we have some other flock of ducks that are up at the top part of the property think about just bringing them all down here just having a huge flock um, and this having a, for a permanent area here. It may be two permanent areas. There's enough room for that once you kind of go all the way down on that end. But uh, it, it is a little more challenging moving the ducks here, especially now, especially without having uh, pasture area. So, and uh, we want to make sure that they have access to the pond. We, we put them on the pond at different points of the year. So uh, now you're back here in the, the deep, bowels <laughs> behind our house where it's not the, the prettiest I've been storing wood and all kind of things back here uh, so we're just gradually cleaning things but everybody has that area oh I shouldn't say everybody a lot of people especially homesteaders have an area of their their place where they just have things that are stored and it's not the most aesthetically pleasing areas but you have to have them besides you never know especially with the way things have been Lowe's could close too one day and you may not have that so 
keeping wood and extra materials on site is handy. So while I have to clean up this wood and I'm thinking, I'm not thinking, I have to have a brooder um, for the chicks that are coming. And I like to have a, a brooder for, for any of our birds that get, get broody and they want to hatch some eggs. So I'm thinking about using this scrap wood here for a chick brooder as well as a mama brooder. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. So uh, we'll just have to see how that goes. Well, I'm gonna start separating this wood and seeing what I can make work. And uh, you just have to see what I make out of it. So stay tuned. And I must say, even though today didn't go as planned, we did get the job done despite having to wrestle with a fence that was all tangled up and having to add an extra fence that I didn't intend on adding and then having to be all in poison ivy I didn't plan on being in. I don't know if you saw it. I kind of knew that the, I knew the poison ivy was kind of on the ground, but I didn't know it was all up hutting my head and everything else as we were working around it. So it was really all over the place. And uh, with the way it is, I couldn't have, bring, couldn't have brought any equipment in here, like my lawn tractor, to uh, clear it out. Because I didn't know what was all here. And uh, just stumps and various sticks and things. So uh, right now, they're just going to clean, our cleanup crew is going to have to clean it up for us.